Okay, who's busting through now? Oh, dang. go again and see like I, like I was saying uh, um Sunny Hill for its time was actually more um, innovative for a game a little bit more innovative than a lot of horror films a lot of horror films back then they were kind of uh, just simple kind of more psychological kind of these little hint of ghosts here and there they weren't really that good you know but Silent Hill kind of put the movies back in early 2000 to shame because it was just a different type of creepy horror and it was an interactive game which was like you know, just way more better than watching, sitting, watching a movie because you're involved. You just come out from the darkness, all creeping. Hold your fire. Gingerly, gingerly. Now this is a real cool level. Nice, very kind of cold look to the room. Nice blue kind of dreamlike kind of uh, brightness. Slight brightness to the room. And it's kind of strange because the walls are covered. Oh, and that plasticky stuff. So you ask yourself, why is it like that? You ask yourself the questions, why is it like that? You know, those in insectricities makes it creepy. Because there's no explanation. That's where the creepiness comes from. And here we are. I think we're about due for a boss. A boss. Now this boss design, I'm, I'm not too fond of. He's a real good boss. Real tough. Real engaging. Real engaging fight. But the thing is, I just don't like the way that they made his head. I think that's the problem. The body is good. But the face and head, they should have redesigned it, reshaped it or something. It just seems like um, one, uh, like a Super Mario, um, um, those plants that bite out, that pop out and bite from uh, the pipes that you have to jump over. Always in Super Mario, you know those, those plants? Maddie plants or whatever they have From the little shop of horrors, kind of looks like that. But uh, the movie, but uh, uh, it's a good fight though. It's really engaging. Right now. Where is he? Where is he? Oh! Oh! See, he almost got me. Man, that is fog. That's fog up the ass. And 
you are gone. Emily! Tina! I'm so glad that you are all right. Why are you here alone? I lost my mom on the way to the lake. You're safe now. Let's go search together. To look alike. Ryan and George must be there too. And here we go again, we start off historical society. So we're in a safe little place here. It seems normal, flower, wallpaper, you know, looks good, safe, looks like a, a nice uh, neighbor's mom's house, classic 90s kind of thing. But then, behind these doors, hmm. Oh, oh yeah, these design characters, very, very creepy, very well designed monster characters. Now, top of this worm, look how they jump and stick. Look at that. It, it, it just so much detail and so much, uh, so just well done. Now, I see these little these guys. The way their faces look, like the design of the monsters, and that big fat guy's well design. And they're not just creepy, it's like a, uh, the way that their intention was creepy, eccentricity, mysterious, vagueness. That's how the designs of the monsters are. Creepy, mysterious, uh, intriguing, vagueness, you know, all those things. It's just all those things all mashed up, you could tell, just by the design of them. I don't know about I can't remember if the older Silent Hill games actually had that trend that transition where the main character or characters actually saw the world transform around them like they did the movie did that a lot the Silent Hill movie where the main actor or character always saw the world around them transform into from reality to the Silent Hill world which I kind of think Maybe one or two times would work, but not all the time, and it doesn't work for the game. It's more better that the transition of the world from Silent Hill 